Hello, transport nerds and fellow planners, and welcome back to Talking Planning. Today, we're going to make our way down to Cleveland because there's a media launch on for a brand new transport project that's being launched, and it's one I'm involved in, so it's going to be an exciting day. So let's make our way down there now, and I'll catch you once I'm on the other side. So I've got my coffee ready and let's head down to Ravy Bay to go and check out that brand new toy. I'm just walking along the footpath on Masthead Drive, which is the main road out to Ravy Bay. And at first impressions, there's not a lot to suggest this trial's happening. Apart from one little thing, which I'll show you right now. Yeah, so that's the sign that you'll first see that lets you know that this trial's happening. It hasn't been flipped over yet, but that will be done, I assume, pretty soon this morning. Because we've got an exciting day ahead. It's just time for a quick, important PSA. See those signs behind like that? They just say driverless trial bus zone. So I should point out, those are not passenger stops. So if you wait here, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to pick you up. The stops are these standard J-Pole style signs, which I'll show you in just a second. So behind me, you'll notice a designated shuttle stop with a J-Pole marking behind it. So these are where you can board the vehicle. You'll find a contact tracing form on the orange information box below, as well as some general details about operating hours and shuttle operations. So you'll be required to fill in that form before you board. And from there, we can travel around the loop. Whilst I make my way along the path to Raby Bay Foreshore, let's talk a bit about the media launch. As the second trial for the Redlands Coast and the first trial on the mainland, this event was a big deal. There were local media sources, including Redland Zone, as well as delegates from Redland City Council, RACQ, and a variety of other project partners. Redland City Council Mayor Karen Williams prepared a speech reflecting on the importance of future technology trials and how exciting this project is for the Redlands. After a good 15 minutes of speeches, introductions, and pleasantries, it was time to cut the ribbon and for all the delegates to jump on board. As part of the media launch, we were all well watered and I scored a Redlands Coast cap, which suited the project more than my current Batuta Advocate one. Sadly, I could no longer claim to represent Australia's oldest newspaper, who I'm sure would have had a great headline for this project. Once the curious school kids had finished climbing all over the shuttle, it was time for the maiden voyage. So it's been a big morning, but I think it's been pretty good. We've had a successful media launch and 
I decided not to go on for a ride on the vehicle today because it's a little bit busy and let's let all the delegates have their fun. I can have a go next time. Plus, I'm going to be out here fairly soon operating this vehicle as well, which will be really cool. So, let's cut to some footage that I was able to take whilst during some of my other chances to ride on board this vehicle. Right now. Once on board, there's comfortable seating for six passengers, air conditioning and USB chargers, which are great for all those electronic devices. For the passengers, buttons and controls are nice and simple. There's one for the doors, one for the wheelchair ramp and there's an emergency call button. You'll also find speakers and a CCTV camera, which are used to monitor the vehicle and communicate with passengers if required. There's also a control panel by the door and a line display to show passengers the route. Moving around, you'll find roof mounted hand grips as well as these standing benches that you can lean against. In this trial, all passengers must be seated and wearing a seatbelt, but in other jurisdictions, this vehicle has carried standing passengers. Unlike the passengers, the chaperone must always stand up to monitor the vehicle. Now that we've covered off most of the important features of this shuttle, let's enjoy the view, sit back, and relax and enjoy the quiet sounds of the shuttle as we make our way around the top roundabout to turn around. After making our way round the roundabout, it's time to continue along Masthead Drive, but this time with the foreshore on the opposite side of the vehicle. Our shuttle makes its way past parked cars easily, although impatient overtaking drivers can fly past and cause our vehicle to stop. The EZ10 is an extremely sensitive machine, so don't make it sad. If you are overtaking, please leave a wide berth and look out for oncoming traffic. But even when we do stop with the press of a button, we're on our way again. Flash forward a few more minutes and we've looped back at the next roundabout. This area is busy, 
So let's sit back and enjoy the reflections of the shuttle in the windows of the parked cars. And after a 20 minute or so journey, we end up back where we started on a lovely sunny Redlands Coast day. As we come past the last stop on the route, I'd like to say thank you so much for joining me on Talking Plant and I will see you again next time.